Hello everybody and welcome to another video in this video. In this video, we will be doing my top games of 2019. And with that said, hope y'all do enjoy. Also, if you do, please leave a like, subscribe, follow me on the road to 400 subscribers. Also, leave your games down below or top, top anything from, uh, down below in the comments. Mainly games, top games. Leave your top games down below in the comments. But, just to add a little bit of a, uh, out of a, you know, out of nowhere-ish thing, we'll be, we'll also be doing my number one worst game ever. There's no other worst game that I have played this year worse than this, and it really disappointed me that this game sucks so badly, because I put so much trust behind the company that was making it, I'm like, oh man, maybe they can pull it out, maybe they can do this, maybe they can do that. And it turns out they can't. They need to update and fix it very, very soon. But what game is it? Well, we're about to see. That game is WWE 2K20. WWE 2K20. What a shit show. Through and through. Still a shit show. It crashes when I make a championship. They just added create a championship a little bit ago. But every time I go into it and try to create a championship, it crashes and that doesn't allow me to create a championship. Also, if you're if you are able to use a create a championship, you're not done there. Because if you try to use it in a custom arena or just an arena in general, I heard it crashes. So 2K, you need to fix your shit. You need to fix this game, and you need to bring it up to a par to 2K19. And, man, oh man, 2K21, that shit better be working on launch, because I won't be picking that up on launch day. I know you guys might be disappointed in that, but trust me, I think I'll be happier if I didn't, especially after this shit show. But trust me, the series will continue in January. Uh, when I do Wrestle Kingdom 14, I'm planning on doing that in 2K19 the beginning. Um, we'll just be um, setting up matches for the show just out of random. I think I'll be choosing the competitors. Um, and yeah, for Wrestle Kingdom 14. So look out for that for 2K19. And if this stuff isn't fixed and if 2K21 is trash, then you know I'm already planning on saving up for a PC. So we'll be we'll just be playing modded 2K19 on there because that way you can add superstars, take them away, and so on. It'll just be much easier. But just get it out of the way first um, before my top games. 2K20, worst game of the year. Do not pick this up right now. Pick it up in a couple months, like when it's fixed. Or actually, you know, just follow follow it and you know get the progression of the game but with that said we now move on to my top games of 2019 using the flash on here just to make sure you can see everything but yeah these are my top 20 games of 2019 now next year won't be top 20 it might be top whatever i do it by amount of games i've played and enjoyed not you know, stick to a number scale. Now, there will come a point where I'll have to stop doing that. Like, let's say 50 games are released and I really enjoy them all. It's like, okay, Daniel, um, choose like five or something. <laughs> but, you know, but, um, you know, as long as it doesn't surpass 25, I think, you know, this, this thing should do. But with that said, let's get into my top 20 games of 2019. First one up is Death Stranding, and in a way isn't a game, because the gameplay, like the fighting gameplay, sucks ass, but the story, world, and just characters grabbed me and hooked me in when I first heard about it. When I first heard about this, I'm like, whoa, this game looks like fucking, like, dope shit, you know? And then once I heard it was by Hideo Kojima, I'm like, okay, instantly hooked. And then once I started seeing more info and trailers and stuff and Norman Reedus was in it, I just was like, oh my god, this looks so fucking dope. And then it came out, I got the collector's edition, I really liked that. And then I played it, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I knew it was going to be like a delivery 
uh, simulator or whatever, but you, you know, you deliver packages. But the thing I like about it is each delivery isn't the same. You have to take a different route with each delivery. It's not all the same, you know, it's like, oh, walk with no problems and so on and so forth. That's what I like about it because everybody's world is connected. So you'll see things that other players have done throughout the world. So you'll see a ladder or you'll see a note or whatever, which I love. And I just love traversing the world onto my next uh, delivery um, place. The one thing I hate about the game is the combat. Say you come into contact with some BTs or whatever. Yeah, run away. Don't even attempt to fight them. It's not fun to fight them. It's horrible combat and not even worth your time. Now, what I think would have done great with this game especially is if they had like a arkham slash shadow of mordor style of combat because that would have done wonders in my opinion but this one kind of sticks with the mgs but not as polished as mgs mgs 5 had a glorious combat system i loved every encounter and shootout and so on so if this game would add a like uh, a sword or something of the sorts with the Arkham style combat. I think that would have worked wonders for the game. But so far, it's more of an experience than it is a game. And if you like, like, out there sci-fi and stuff, this game is definitely for you. Plus, if you love Hideo Kojima, pick it up as well. And after that, we got Super Mario Maker 2. Now it's here number 19 because it is a fun mario game i love all the levels everybody creates and everything and just the community aspect of it plus the story is really good too it's simple mario but then i look back at it and i'm like okay well it's just another really good mario side scroller and with mario games nowadays especially after the release of Odyssey, I believe even the 2D side-scroller Mario games need to do something different. Because Mario Odyssey was able to, you know, blend all the styles together so beautifully. And Mario Maker 2 isn't a bad game, it's just another Mario game. You know, you jump and dodge and everything. Which isn't a bad thing, but, you know, you're expecting something more. And especially after games like Rayman Legends, I hope they can do something within the next release of a 2D side-scroller Mario. But this game comes in at number 19, and, you know, it has fulfilled a handful of hours for me. And I can't wait to return to it sometime soon. And after that, we got Trover Saves the Universe, another experience in a way, because it was made for VR, but you can play without VR. But this this game has some, like, some of the most fun combat I have ever played in a video game, and especially since it's meant for VR, it, imp it implements the non-VR side beautifully, because you play as the Cherubian, you know, controlling Trover. And just every aspect of Trover and, you know, the combat and jumping and platforming is really fun. And, you know, like there were a couple of parts that I got hooked up, or, you know, stuck on, but I found my way around it and enjoyed it in the end. Plus, it's like a Rick and Morty episode. And I like that cartoon or cartoon, or show, or whatever you want to call it, you know, and, you know, it's just really enjoyable, and I can't wait till the DLC comes out, and can't wait to see if they're, they'd ever make a, um, sequel to it, and really hope they do, but yeah, definitely pick this up if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, or just want to experience something, uh, you know, that you wouldn't really experience, Then after that, here, actually, we're gonna switch up Switch up, uh, no, we're gonna put my Switch games in one pile and my PS4 games in another. But next up is Days Gone, a PlayStation exclusive that released earlier this year, I believe in April. Now, Days Gone, you may say, oh, it's another zombie game. 
It is, but it's really fun. I really f enjoy the taking down the zombies aspect. I wish there was more melee weapons in here, but it seems gun-focused, which isn't a problem. It's just when I strike my zombies down, I like to use a melee weapon. But the story's really good. Haven't completed it. Only played it a handful of hours, but this game came out at a time where there's just too many games. I want to go back to it. And, uh, you know, play the rest of the story. But the one thing that will keep me from doing that is, one, the realistic, air quotes, realistic aspect of it. And that's where your chair runs out of, your chair, your freaking uh, bike runs out of uh, gas. It's like, oh, you need to go find more gas. It's like, ah. Uh, Awesome. I need to go in that horde of zombies or whatever and find more gas. It's a video game. Stop with the realistic shit. Like, I mean, I get it. Some games need to be realistic, but just let me drive my motorcycle from A to B and just enjoy it. Don't make me, oh, you're out of gas. Oh, oh you need to, oh, you're, you know, you, oh, you died. Then you need to restart the mission all over. That's one unenjoyable aspect of the game. But if you're looking for a kick-ass zombie game, this is a game for you. And then also, I would like to mention that the... <laughs> I don't know why I forgot to mention this at the beginning. But the way that these games are ordered are 20... Well, in this case, 20 to 5. They are games that I either played and beaten and enjoyed or just played... A bunch of and haven't beaten but still enjoyed you see what I mean and um yeah but the top five games really matter I beat them all and well besides one but y you'll you'll understand why but you know I played them all but just haven't beat all of them leading up to five but the top five I've either beaten them or just played enough of them to understand if it's getting go on my list just want to get that across don't know why i didn't uh state it at the beginning of the video but anyway moving on okay next up is a one of the two remasters that are are in my collection ctr crash team racing now i popped this in when i first got it and instantly enjoyed it it's one of those games that can level or level up that can you know, rise up to Mario Kart. I think this is honestly better than Mario Kart because I don't think there's as many, you know, um, like, annoying aspects about it. I think you can play it and enjoy it and not get thrown, you know, and not get green mushrooms thrown at you or whatever, or banana peels or whatever. It's just a really good Carter. Carter? That's not even a fucking word. Kart racer. There we go. Kart racer, and yeah, I enjoyed my time with it, and cannot wait to return to it sometime soon. Then after that, we got another remaster, and that is Medieval Sir Daniel Fortescue. Um, been recently trying to play this more, um, haven't beat it, and uh, that's another thing with the remasters, remaster side of my games. Um, it, you know, like, I've already beaten it or played it beforehand, so it's like, Okay, I can push this to the back, but I recently started playing playing it more a couple days ago, and I, I like it, don't get me wrong, but I found out the thing I don't like about the game, and that's it, that is, if you die, then you have to redo all the things you did in the level. Annoying, very annoying, just saying... I hate games like that, and I get it, they need to add a punishment, but at a certain point, it just gets really annoying. You just send me back to a checkpoint, not to the start of the level with nothing complete. But other than that, really fun remaster, and I can't wait to play more of it and finish it. Then after that, we got a game, a surprise game that came out of nowhere, Greedfall. Now, this game is made by Spiders and Focus. And it's just a really fun pirate uh, slash, well, no, pirate adventure. And I'm enjoying all the words, 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 worlds, god damn it, worlds I've um, 
been on so far. I enjoy the combat. I enjoy the dialogue choices and just the story. And I kind of like to dive more, uh, dive deeper into it once I get the chance to. But with all these games coming out, I don't think I'll be able to. But yeah, Greedfall. If you're looking for a kick-ass pirate game, this is the game for you. Or I guess it's a pirate. I don't know. But, you know, adventurer. Adventurer game. Then after that, we got Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Don't know why they rebooted it, but they did. But this one, when it first came out, I have to admit, I was kind of hooked on it. I was hooked on to the story, really enjoyed the more realistic aspect of it. Some of the parts of the campaign are really disturbing, especially when you break into that one house and there's a baby just crying and you know there's a mom cradling it and so on it's like okay you know this is realistic call of duty it's not like other modern warfares where you bust in and absolutely nobody's in there besides the enemy but this one really kicked it up with the story i really enjoyed the reboot um reboot side of things still don't understand why they did it but they did it and i think what they should have did is just named it something different. Not Modern Warfare, but just something. I don't know. I don't know what they could have named it. But I really enjoyed the story. Really enjoyed the multiplayer in the first couple months of it. But then it just came became spam heavy and camper heavy. Just like any other Call of Duty. And also, they need a team deathmatch playlist and a kill confirm playlist. Why don't they have that? I don't know. They need it, though, so I can return to it someday and play more of it. But the only game mode I'm enjoying right now is Infected. Not a bad thing, but it's just like, okay, you need to add Infected and Kill Confirm for me to stay longer. But besides that, really good story. Survival sucks, so don't get jealous Xbox One players because it does suck and does not come anywhere near close to Modern Warfare 3 Survival. But the multiplayer is fun here and there. Infected is the best thing right now for me. Oh yeah, gunfight. Gunfight's really good too. I don't I don't play a lot of that, but I need to. Need to return to it. But gunfight's really kick ass. Infected's really kick ass on the multiplayer side. And the story is a really good retelling of um or not retelling, but reboot for the Modern Warfare series. And yeah, I can't wait to see what they do in the future. Then after that, we got my looter shooters for my top games of the year. And the first one up is Rage 2. Rage 2, really, I uh, love the redesign to this series. Um, you know, the first one didn't really do it for me. The, the story was good, but just the gameplay and traveling everywhere didn't really do it for me. And then this one came out with Doom-like gameplay, and you can use a car and stuff like that. And, you know, the gameplay is really, really fun. And I instantly fell in love. But to be honest, this game was kind of a time waster. Not in a bad way, but in a, like, okay, I'm waiting for the next release way. But I cannot wait to get back to it sometime soon and play more of it. The gameplay is kick-ass, the story is fun, and the, um, just moving around... The entire world is fun. Yeah. Uh, same with the uh, Diary said gameplay. Yeah, the gameplay is fun. And yeah, if you're definitely looking for a really fun open world Bethesda game, this is a game for you. Then after that, we come to The Division 2. And one of my all-time favorite looter shooters... And, you know, I recently got back into looter shooters after playing Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3 just hooked me. And for some reason, I don't know what it is, but that series has always hooked me. I played the first one back in 2009 when it came out. I really enjoyed it, but stopped playing early. I'm like, okay, that was fun. Then the second one came out, and I got it. Like, not on launch, but, you know, I got it. I'm like, okay, this is really fun. I'm really enjoying my time with it. And then, you know, I kind of fell out of hand with it but then the third one came out and i don't know what it was but it just hooked me for like five days i'm still playing it to this day and just enjoying all the guns and loot and armor and all everything about it and division 2 does the same thing but in third person and yeah division 2 is one of my all-time favorite looter shooters i can't wait till division 3 if they're gonna make that 
And yeah, Division 2 is just kick-ass looter shooter. I really enjoy the cover, <laughs> cover and fire aspect of the game. I enjoyed the level of difficulty of some missions. And yeah, I bet this would be kick-ass with the squad. So let me know if y'all played Division 2 down below. And yeah, we would see uh, if we could play together or something. But yeah, this game, kick-ass. And definitely if you're into looter shooters, pick this up. Then after that, we got the uh, baby that started my looter shooter uh, re-entry, Borderlands 3. This game just has all the guns, all the uh, the all the guns, all the gameplay, and all the story that you want from a looter shooter. Plus, it's Borderlands 3, baby. So, you know, can't get better than that, in my opinion. And, yeah, I've just been enjoying the, you know, the the traversal and how you get around the world and all the guns and everything and it's just really fun and i'm really enjoying the upgrading aspect side of things too and i kind of like to return to it sometime soon and that's going to be a lot what i say so i can't wait to return to it sometime soon just forewarning you uh yeah but <laughs> uh, then next up is a uh, one of the only, well, one of the two superhero games on my list, Control. Control has some of the best superpower slash force ability in a video game I have ever seen. Plus, I enjoy the world and all the gameplay and how you can slow down and shoot people. And it's just really fun. Cannot wait to put more hours into it. I only got to play a little bit of it, but yeah, I cannot wait to put more hours into it whenever I get the chance to. But yeah, Control. Really, um, out of nowhere, surprise, and I'm really happy that they, um, got to make a game like this. I forgot who made this, the oh, 505 or, oh, Remedy, yeah, keep kicking it, keep kicking ass, Remedy, and bringing out games like this. Then, after that, we got my second superhero game, Ultimate Alliance 3. Now, when this was first announced, I was caught off guard. I'm like, holy shit, dude, no fucking way. And it's Nintendo Switch exclusive? Oh my god. Caught me by surprise, and man, every time I play it, I just get taken back to like 2005 or 6 when the original Ultimate Alliance came out. And man, I just remember those days. And then I bring him to here, and it's instantly enjoyable. I love all the heroes, Venom, Spider-Man, everything. Like, everybody's teaming together to take down Thanos, and I love every aspect of the game. And can't wait to play more of it whenever I get a chance to. And after that, we have RTOM Simulator 2019, or Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus, I love these games. Haven't beat this one yet, but the gameplay and everything is just really enjoyable. I love the train travel aspect of the game. I am stuck at a part, though, so I'm hoping to overcome that very, very soon. And hopefully, I'll be able to do that very, very soon. And, um, yeah, but besides me getting stuck on a couple parts, this game just kicks ass like the others. And I kind of wait to finish it very, very soon whenever I return to it. And after that, we got a game I have waited 15 plus years for. I think 15 years. I don't know. 15 years for. Whatever the, whatever, uh, 2 was released. But Kingdom Hearts 3. Man, when this game first came out on the 29th of January, I was pumped to shit. I couldn't believe it. I still couldn't, I still can't believe it to this day that this game is released. And then when I started playing, I'm like, holy shit, dude, yes, I love everything about this game. It's so enjoyable, so fun, I enjoy all the worlds. My favorite has to be Toy Story and you traveling to Pizza Planet and the mall and everything. So kick-ass. And then, you know, I realized that this game's leveling system is very out of date no i thought it was going to be more like a yakuza type leveling system to where you choose aspects of what you want to upgrade about yourself but no it's not like that at all it's the same old kingdom hearts leveling aspect to where you just gain xp and it just levels it for you 
I'm really hoping for Kingdom Hearts 4 whenever that game gets released. Probably won't be released when I'm alive, but hopefully when that gets released, they add a Yakuza-type leveling system to where you can choose what to upgrade. So if you want to upgrade Sora's life, you can. If you want to upgrade Goofy's life, you can. If you want to upgrade whoever's in your party's life, you can, or whatever. But besides that, I enjoyed all the world's story and the gameplay. Bosses are still hard as fuck, though. So just a forewarning if you're looking into playing this. But yeah, just really fantastic. And also really surprised that it was released for Xbox One. Just saying. Then after that, we move into my top five games of the year. And the first one up is Devil May Cry 5. And when I first, you know, played this, I instantly just jumped in and sunk myself into the gameplay and the world of DMC. Devil May Cry 5 has always had fantastic gameplay, but this game just does it just one, you know, one better. And just makes it faster, smoother, and simpler. I enjoyed Dante's just, you know, guns and swords, um... And every character you play as in here, I enjoyed every aspect of all their gameplays. And the boss fights are not hard at, like, not that hard. So it's not like pain, you know, but like throw your controller at the wall type of uh, hard. It's really enjoyable. And yeah, I couldn't recommend a better um, beat em up than this this year. And if you're looking to uh, fulfill that Devil May Cry uh, urge, get this game then after that we got resident evil 2 baby i'm on the b playthroughs for both claire and um leon and man you know the these games i finally figured out the earlier resident evils i finally figured out when they get enjoyable and that's when you start to figure out what to do i know that sounds like the stupidest stupidest description ever but trust me if you're not into these games or don't think you will be get it and then just figure out what to do because once you figure out what to do and you finish your first playthrough then your second playthrough you'll know what to do and it'll just be a more enjoyable experience and yeah man this is one of my all-time favorite horror games of the year i think it's my only one on here but it just kills it in every aspect the way you gotta you know salvage ammo and keep it to yourself the way you combine uh plants and you know herbs and ammo and you know mr x he's one of the scariest motherfuckers out there i mean holy shit every time he walks through the door i'm like oh shit no we gotta turn around and go the other way because that motherfucker will not let you pass but man besides that it's just really enjoyable. Cannot wait to Resident Evil 3. Cannot wait to finish the B playthroughs. And yeah, man, fantastic. <laughs> then after that, we got Sakiro Shadows Die Twice. Now, I was talking about earlier about, oh, there might be one game that I haven't finished in my top five games. And that's this game. Reason I haven't finished it is because, one, it's hard as fuck, and two, um, I believe it came out in a time where, you know, a bunch of other games came out, but I'm just gonna judge it, um, from what I've played so far, Sekiro, kick-ass gameplay, kick-ass traversal, I enjoyed the grapple hook, and just, I love the leveling system of this game, you level up your arm, and the things it can do, and it's really fun plus you can use dual swords i think or just one sword plus i love the gameplay the gameplay of the parry aspect so where you gotta you know like you can block but you know if you get that right parry you you just feel like a badass and you can take down the enemy uh whenever you want and man the boss fights are really good i cannot wait to return to it very very soon but man just really fantastic and i can't wait to see what from software has planned for next generation then after that we move into star wars jedi fallen order now the reason this is coming in at number two is because it's more of 
an enjoyable well it's more of a more linear um experience compared to Sekiro to where Sekiro has like a big open world and so on Jedi Fallen Order has that plus more worlds you can uh uh go to plus it's more it's campaign based that's what I like you know there's cutscenes and stuff in it so you can tell it's like okay this is a more linear type of game I mean, the worlds are open and you can go to different aspects of it, but not until you come back and not until you find the part that you need to go back to, which I enjoy. I just enjoy, like nowadays, I just enjoy a more linear campaign-focused game. And this game does that with flying colors. Plus, I love Star Wars. And, man, I cannot wait to see what they do for a sequel because it's hinted at that Respawn wants to do a sequel Really hope EA doesn't get into it and mess with it. And yeah, just enjoyed the gameplay, the story, and everything about this game. And kind of wait to see what they have planned for it in the future. But with that being done, we have one more game, ladies and gentlemen. One more. And what game is it? Well, it is my favorite game of 2019. And that is... Judgment. Judgment. Man, oh man. After recently falling in love with the Yakuza games, I will be picking up the 4, 5, uh, 3, 4, and 5 collection once that comes out in February. But after recently falling in love with those games and picking this up day one, oh my god. I love everything about this game. The story, the world, the, the just running around Kamurochu and just going and experience everything. I haven't been to the arcade a lot. Or, um, I mean, no, no, let me reward that. I, I couldn't even remember going to the arcade the amount of times I have been to the arcade in this game. Yeah. Hold on, let me reword that. I went to the arcade a lot in this game. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wear, I was trying to word it in a positive way but yeah i went to the arcade a shit ton of times i played uh house of the dead shit ton of times or their style of house of the dead just everything about this game i enjoyed i love going to the arcade the stores and everything especially just the aspect that you have to run everywhere but i didn't really care because i'm like oh my god i could experience something new on the way there and every time i did go to my next mission i experienced something that detoured me in a positive way the combat's awesome the story is fantastic and plus i enjoy the investigation aspect of the game cannot wait to see what they have planned for this series in the future and man if you're looking for a great detective game this game is the place to go i would call it japanese batman if i could but i can't i can only call it judgment and with that said judgment is my favorite game of 2019 can i wait to see what the in the future can i wait to see what they have planned for just yakuza in the future and yeah man just fantastic but with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that has been my top games of 2019. All fantastic games, but this one comes in at the end and just uh, and fulfills everything I love about it. But with that said, hope you all did enjoy, and if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and follow me on the road to 400 subscribers. Let me know uh, your games, your favorite games of the year down below. Would love to hear and yeah, hope you all did enjoy, and yeah, if you did, leave a like, subscribe, follow me on the road to 400 subscribers, I know I already said that, and with that said, I'll see you all next year, and yeah, man, I can't wait to bring more to this channel, but with that said, hope you have a nice day, I'll see you all next year.